Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and in this video we're going to talk about the artistic side of lasers. Yes, because lasers don't have to just be for like raves, like in clubs, like seriously. There's so much you can do, and there's some really big benefits to using a laser. The top two being, they're real small for how much light they output, so that means less transportation space, whether that's a pickup truck, a truck, a semi-trailer, whatever you work with is less than a typical moving light, considering the amount of brightness, even not considering the amount of brightness. I mean, the, even the Skyrider series lasers, the M2s, M5s, stuff like that, they're the size of a really small, cheapo moving head. Like, they're small, but you get a lot out of them. And number two is that you can have multiple light beams, multiple colors, morph them, etc. All within the beam. Stuff that you just can't do with a light. So it's not for everyone and there are steps you have to take every day to be safe. There's a little bit of due diligence there. I mean, you can catch our video on how to start with lasers to understand that. But today, we're going to dive in to the artistic side. In the last video, we talked all about the technical side how to actually make this stuff work, and did a brief overview of that. It's not step-by-step, step, it's not everything, but we taught you most of the stuff. We've got the rest inside of Learning Stage Lighting Labs for any of these, and we can always help people there, which we include with purchases, so if you're looking for lasers, there's no other place to buy them besides through us, no better place. All right, that being said, let's dive in to the artistic side with the Laser Cube and the X-Laser Skywriter series. So here first we are in Laser OS, and I'm going to switch us over to our other camera. And we have gone ahead, and one, I have moved the camera and moved the lasers and set the safety zones appropriately so they look really great. Now there's a few things to talk through about our setup actually, so let's go back to me. So I have purposefully in this setup made things not ideal for a laser in order to show you how incredible these things can be on camera, right? We've got our whole studio setup that we have for every video here. We've got the LED wall on and it looks good. It's nice, you know, it's nice and crisp. Um, it's, you know, it's not at full brightness because LED walls almost never are, but it looks good. We've got our various lights on that are always in our rig. We've got our front light coming from this, this big softbox video light. And it's quite bright and it's shooting all over the space where the laser is. Okay, so when you see lasers in laser company videos especially, there's pretty much never front light, and there's often no light at all. They're in a pitch black room. So this is different because we're applying this in a real context. This could be in a church. This could be for a band. This could be for a DJ set. But we have a considerable amount of light here. It would look even better if I kept more light out of the space that it's shooting, out of where it is, you know, starting, where it's shooting, etc. Um, if I had a thicker haze, it's a fairly thin haze right now, all of that would make it look better, but it already looks pretty darn good. So, that to say, let's talk about making the laser cube look really good and, and work through that. So, you know, first and foremost, as you can probably see, when this laser comes down in terms of setup, it looks best when it's more perpendicular, when it's further down compared to where we are. So you got to follow the rules for anywhere that an audience member can stand. You got to be about three meters. You have to be three meters above that point, not about. You need to be three meters above that point with your beam. You need to terminate it on a solid surface. You need to avoid cameras. We've set up our safety zones here to avoid our camera, though we get fairly close to it so it looks cool. All right. So now let's talk about how do we artistically work with lasers inside of a program like Laser OS. So, like I started with, I've got this MIDI controller with a bunch of faders on it, and I took the global power and I kicked it all the way down. Now, the reason there's global power is because you can actually have more lasers, so you can have global and you can have your individual lasers. So I would go ahead and, you know, put my next laser on two, right, put the next one on three, and so on and so forth. So I've got that intensity control in my hands. This is really crucial because we're firing lasers live and on the fly. Some other things that I can put, I can BPM, we can get through audio, we can get it through Ableton Link, or we can set a manual speed to it, just a, a faster, slower. So let's do that for the sake of this tutorial. So we'll just go ahead and we'll click on it. We'll sign a hotkey. We're going to put that on the last fader. Okay. 
And then I could go ahead and I could do rotation, which is going to be of the physical laser, if I wanted to. I'm not sure I want to, though. <laughs> and I could adjust the zoom, which I've got uh, kind of going along with our safety zone here. And so we're going to do things here today that avoid frying my cameras, right? Yes. Um, very important. So, so you get those dialed in, but the fact is, you know, we're able to bring this up and down. We're able to go ahead and adjust the speed of any of the animations that are going on. We're able to do things like bringing the laser on with a stopped animation, bring it, bring it in. The beautiful thing about something like Laser OS, as you can see, is you always will have this preview, even when you power, you've got the power all the way down. Okay, so that means you can go ahead like any other piece of media and get it into place, get it where you want it, right? Then go ahead, fade up the intensity on the fader, like I'm doing with my hands, and then fade it in. And that's going to be a lot of what makes this work artistically and how to use it in a way that looks really nice. Like, I mean, of course, it is easy to just go in here, go to the abstracts, you know, audio reactive right here. Turn it back on, sorry. You know, get something that's just going crazy to the beat, doing a ravey thing, right? You know, even these visualizers, though they are fairly customizable, or rather the abstracts are customizable, the visualizers are not. You know, a lot of them are kind of ravey, kind of jumpy. For a lot of people, bands, churches, etc., that's not going to be the best fit, okay? It might be, it might not be, right? But definitely more DJ-oriented, etc., so... You want to always keep that in mind. When you do have live music, it does add something nice. So let's go ahead and look at what we can do that are beam type projections that look really great on the laser cube. And so a lot of this is going to come into your setup. There are these predefined beam shows and they are very cool and they allow you to bring in different things, save them and access them to be able to work with those in your show. They're, they're kind of ravey, right? I mean, maybe during a rock song, during a fast part, they'll work really well. But I think to be more subtle with our lighting and to, to really work with it well, we've got to tone it down a little bit, okay? And to do that, we are going to go to the Beam Creator. So the Beam Creator is where if I am programming on this laser for a band, for a church, etc., that's where I'm going to spend the most time. Okay, because it is a lot more subtle, and we can do much more subtle things. For example, let's go back to the other camera, and I'm going to bring in a sine wave, let's say. Okay, so turn that on, and by default, you get a non-moving sine wave. Now, be careful with non-moving shapes, especially if you focus the laser into the dot. Just like anything we've talked about here, you need to follow all of the safety precautions for lasers when operating a laser. It's not that difficult, but you do need to do it. Because anything that's not moving, oh look, we've got a little laser banding in our current shutter speed. Anything that's not moving, okay, is it potentially could set things on fire if it sits there too long. So that's key. So even just making it move a little bit like this is going to make a big difference there. Okay. Now look, we've just created something that looks really cool, that's really subtle for a slower song maybe. I can go ahead and adjust the speed up and down, and I can adjust the intensity up and down, and bring it in and out just like a light. And I can, you know, have multiple, etc. In fact, we had a video years ago where we showed you how to integrate MIDI control with Show Cockpit and uh, convert it from ArtNet over. So, And that's a way you could control it with your lighting console, right? We'll go ahead and turn it a color. It looks red. It's really deep. And now, again, we've got that ability to move it to get something really subtle that doesn't steal the show, but adds to the lighting and adds to everything else you're doing in a really good way. Say we go to the horizontal beams. Okay, we'll add one of those. You see, we can add these together. We can do them individually, and you're able to work with it. Now, in this case, I'm just going to delete these and just have the beams. Set them to a color. Let's do a green laser thing. Okay. And then we're able to go ahead over here and add an effect. Okay. I'll do a little movement effect. And then there's this always repeat. So this is really cool. So you can go ahead and set the start and end. Okay. So this one's going to go up. You can see it bounce back and forth. Looks very cool. And then if we kick off this always repeat, then 
it doesn't keep repeating again and again. It just goes once. Okay, so now, if I go ahead and save that, we'll just give it, we'll call it two. So I hit save. Now it's going to be in my folder of playlists and custom beams. So I just created this and it goes once. So it comes all the way down and it goes back up, right? But it's something that you can do with music because now I can tap it. I can hit it again, right? And I can take this one and let's assign a hotkey to it. Number two on my hotkeys. And now I hit my MIDI key and it goes. And so now it's like, in a song, it's like, hey, if I want this to happen every measure, right, I can tap it every measure. And it comes down and it goes up. If I need to fade it out early, I just grab my intensity. I do that. And I'm able to have something that is organic and does fit the music um, without being wild. I think people think a lot that lasers always have to be wild, but they don't. And oftentimes the subtle uses are way cooler and way more inspiring to people in both band, church, DJ type setups when it doesn't draw all the attention to the laser itself. So let's go ahead then. That's some basics here. Um, of course, you know, the various um, oscilloscopes and the abstracts and the visualizers are great when you want something to be crazy. And you can set up an audio input and you can have it react to the audio and that's cool. But using things like the playlist to create your own playlist out of the custom beam creator can really give you something that is a lot more subtle that still looks really great, right? But is subtle instead of being just wild, right? And so you're able to really make it match the music instead of being something that's possibly distracting and that takes over. Now let's go ahead. I want to go ahead and look at this all in Onyx with the Skyrider laser. So we're over here and building, I've enabled my builders, so you gotta do that. Um, that is really just going to this channel, bringing this master up to full, setting your scaling, enabling your builders. Okay, once we've done that, now we can go ahead and we can work. I just have two masters in use today. And I can go ahead and bring it up, right? You can see there I've got a nice nice circle is the default. It's very bright, very defined. Then I can start to work with that circle. The beautiful thing about the Mercury software is just how simple, how easy, and I'm watching my camera, it should stop before, yep, and it stops right before my camera because that's how safety zones work. And so I'm able to just, you know, dial this in just like programming anything else lighting-wise in Onyx. Then we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and take our color. And I like choosing like one of these options. These mix the two colors together. So now I'm going to make it red. And I'm going to make it blue. Okay. And by default, it mixes the two together. On camera, it looks overall like the whole thing's magenta. Um, but actually, if I go to camera four real quick, which I know is an ugly overhead shot of a bunch of stuff on my floor, um, you can see how it actually mixes them together. So if I bring in some green, red, and green, we'll go back to red and blue. And then you can see we have all these different color types, color mixing types, and it will change how the color mixes on the laser itself. And you can see it's subtle, but there's just a lot of different ones, whether it's hard, whether it's, it's not. There's a lot of ways that it can use these two colors within that laser. I like this one. Okay, you can see actually if we go back to our main camera that we get a really cool, a really cool subtle lighting effect there. And so when you're programming these lasers and you're doing so here in a lighting program, there's a lot you can do. The biggest thing is just to remember it's just like any other media, just like the laser cube where, you know, if you want to change something like this color, it's going to be hard, right? It's it's like a color change or a gobo change to change uh, what shape you've got. You know, that's never going to happen smoothly, okay? And that's where the Mercury Builders come in. Because I've got this one live, but then I go to my other builder. And I don't bring the intensity up. I don't make it live. And I go and I set something up for color. I set up a gobo. 
I set up my beam spread. Actually, we'll just leave it as is. Um, and I can do an effect. I can actually have it running a sine wave before prism, which is really cool. And then I can go, I can actually add a prism to. And then, when I make it live, I'll just do it with the fader. You can see it fades in now. It has a prism in it. And so you can see that prism come in. But we have the ability to fade really nicely between two, and actually doing this one via parameters, fade this one out. And so the cool thing about these lasers is whether they're moving, whether they're not, because you see this one just wiggling subtly, is, you know, programming philosophy-wise, like the laser cube, it's going to be the same, right? Set things up, you know, with the intensity off, right? When you're ready to fade it in, bring up the fader and fade it in. You know, most of the time programming-wise, that's going to be what you want to do. And it's going to work really well, right? You're going to have the ability to kind of have that stuff preset in cues, bring this up, and then, you know, maybe you have another cue where you go in and you just do some movement. So you can totally go, just like any other light, I can go to my tilt here and start to put an effect on it, right? And so then I can put this effect on it and I can fade that in and out, you know, with a fader here in Onyx, just like anything else. And I can scare myself like I'm going to blow out my camera, but I've got my safety zone, so I'm good. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, what it looks like is programming these lasers has never been easier. And whether you're using a system that's app-based like the Laser OS and controlling it either maybe with a MIDI controller or controlling it via DMX um, and using something like the Sky Raider Mercury system to control your laser with DMX, you can really do a lot. And lasers can cut through a room like nothing else and create really impactful lighting when you've already got a pretty solid lighting rig and, and do a lot with it. And so I hope this video has really inspired you. And if you are inspired to go buy a laser, then hey, we're your people. Above AVL at LearnStageLightingGear.com, we would love to help you find the perfect laser for your needs and get it. And just remember, if you're thinking about, oh, should I add four more moving lights to my rig? Consider a laser. More, it's going to give you more impact than two or four moving lights. There's a lot that it can do. And they're smaller and lighter and easier to set up. The laser guys, like I say on shows, always have the easiest job um, for setup and teardown. And I, I think it's definitely worth looking into. It's not that much work. And we can help you with every step of the way over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. So... If that sounds good, we'll see you guys in the next video, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you there. Bye.